everyone. This is just a quick thing to say uh, right before I start my video. Um, I made this video like two days ago and um, I'm just editing it now and I'll upload it now. And plus, I really wanted to say hello. <laughs> Alright, so I want to give a, a quick shout in to Soft Spoken Poetry ASMR. Um, I'll link him down below. He um, makes really cool videos. I really like them and um, he also uh, helped me a lot in setting up a Twitter account. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to use Twitter. <laughs> it's not a thing I know how to use. So he helped me out with it a little. Like um, I messaged him and he was helping me out with it. So now I am on Twitter thanks to him. So uh, check him out and also check out my Twitter. And enjoy flying faster than the speed of sound. Hello everyone. I'm Dina, and I'm back with another episode of Educational ASMR. I'm going to be doing this one soft-spoken, as I've gotten some really nice feedback about my um, soft-spoken voice, and also good feedback on um, not using the Apple mic, but rather using um, the microphone on my phone. But today I can't really do that because the amount of noise in this house is insane. We're all picking up some hobbies or um, continuing our old ones. My mom has started cooking more, more cooking, and uh, she also picked up learning the accordion, which is she's not that bad actually. But um, it, it is it's it's causing a lot of noise. My dad has a passion for singing and making music which he is now continuing and it's great and I actually like listening to them and I, I don't mind but since my new hobby right now during this time is making ASMR videos it has made my life a little bit more complicated okay I just wanted to check that it didn't sound so bad um <laughs> okay so in today's episode I'm going to be talking about the Concord Concord, the Concord, the first supersonic uh, commercial aircraft. And in honor of the Concord, I'm going to be spraying this. I don't exactly know why it's in my house. It is an aircraft odor eliminator. And it makes your house smell like a plane, and I really like it. So, I'm going to spray. So, I'm talking about the Concorde, um, as I find it to be a really good example of how technological innovation uh, sometimes is not enough and can be trumped by our economic needs and demand. So commercial technological innovation can be quite damaged. So that takes a little bit of a better way of saying it in my head, but that's just what came out. So we're just going to go with it. We're just going to go. I have some notes written down about the Concorde over here because I wanted to um, just give you some like more specific, not so specific, but just some information about it. So the first commercial flight that the Concorde took was in 1976. It was a revolutionary plane. I mean, I'm going to go to the um, specs like in a minute, but it and then it retired in 2003. So it was also a really super safe plane. There's only ever been one fatal accident on it um, in the years that it ran. Some people have this impression that the Concorde was not a safe plane, um, but there was only one fatal accident. Um, it was on an Air France flight in 2000. Yes, from Paris to New York. It crashed shortly after um, takeoff, and um, it was due to a metal strip that was left on the runway from a previous flight. So it wasn't actually the fault of the plane itself, um, but the engines failed and people died. But anyways, <laughs> other than that, it was a super safe plane. So I'm just going to give you um, a little bit of 
the statistics of the Congo. Now, um, the average speed or the speed of the Congo uh, when in air, I'm not talking about takeoff and landing, I'm saying while flying, was 1,350 miles per hour. To give you an idea, the speed of sound is 767 miles per hour. So it was more than twice the speed of sound. Oh, it's supersonic, so it's obviously going to be more <laughs> than the speed of sound. But <laughs> it was a lot more. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, commercial aircraft now fly um, at a speed of around 400 to 550 miles per hour. So a lot slower um, than the Concorde. The altitude, um, so the height, so like that's like how high, how high, how high the air is flying, of the Concorde was 60,000 feet in the air, which is incredible. Um, if you look at pictures that people took uh, while they were on the plane, you could see the curvature of the earth. And Comparing to average um, to commercial aircraft now, they fly only between 30,000 feet and 42,000 feet, just to give you an idea. It's completely, it's really very flat. Not when I'm in the air, not as high. So if you think what you're looking at in the sky is high now, think it's not. <laughs> just to give you some examples of flight patterns. So, um, the route from uh, New York's airport, JFK, to London Heathrow Airport was average of uh, three and a half hours. Um, it was around the same for the flight from Paris to New York. JFK became a pretty big hub, not hub, but pretty hub to destination for um, the Concorde. The Concorde did fly to Dallas, to Washington, D.C., I think to Barbados a few times a year, a few times once a week in certain times. Um, so it did fly a couple of routes. I know it also flew from Paris to uh, Rio, but it made a stopover in Dakar for refueling. Dakar, 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 for refueling. Um, but the most popular one on flight thus far, JFK from New York to Heathrow. Commercial aircraft now, the average flight time between um, New York, JFK to London is seven hours. Seven hours. Seven. Seven minus And the price of these tickets, um, so the price of a New York to London ticket um, would be around $10,000 to $15,000 for a round ticket um, converted into today's money. And um, so just to give you an idea, commercial aircraft now, due to the impact also, maybe it's not a very, it's as fair of a comparison because there's a lot more competition in um, in the airline industry of this route, there's a lot more lines available, there's a lot more people doing, there's Iceland Air that you flies to, and I'm going to actually get to them, that flies um, through other routes, like there are a lot of competitions, so the prices might not be as fair um, to look at right now compared to the Concord, but this is what they are. So for an economy ticket, the average price is going to be around $300 to $600. A business class ticket would be around $2,000 to $3,500 round trip. And a first class ticket on average would be a $4,000 to $6,000 round trip. So while this might not be the best comparison, I do know it was quite similar back in the day. Um, I know that, oops, I know that um, the flight of the Concorde ticket was 20% more expensive than the flight than um, a ticket of first class of a first class ticket. So it was incredibly expensive. And it was really cool. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about some advantages of it. My sister, I'm very jealous of her, when she was 10 years old, 
Smith read. She did not fly the Concord once. She flew it twice. And now she hates flying. I just can't wait to get this book out. So my parents um, were frequent flyers of the Concord. They did a lot of traveling, cross-Atlantic um, traveling for work. We lived in DC, but they would also fly from JFK a lot of the time uh, to places in Europe. They loved the Concorde. It worked out really well for them. Because if you're traveling, say, five, six times a month, so then most of those are called transatlantic saving those extra hours is really, really, really cool and super important. And it feels like a good deal. However, those tickets that my parents got were not paid for by my parents. They would be paid for by the company they were working in, the firm they were working in. And this was true for a lot of business travelers, and it's still true today um you know business class flights a lot of the time or if you're traveling for a business you are paying for a buyer <laughs> your company so that was one aspect people wouldn't really buy these tickets for leisure because if you're only flying let's say one or two times a year transatlantic i think you can save those extra hours those extra eight hours both ways <laughs> because you're only doing it once in a while I kind of see it quite similar to people, um, people, <laughs> to uh, how Iceland Air and Norwegian Airline has kind of changed the pricing of transatlantic travel now. They are not great airlines, right? Um, not nobody is. So we're, we're talking pre this crap we're on, but I'm not saying that they're striving, but they have made uh, a they have made a dent in the market for um, air, uh, for routes that are transatlantic. So how, how that works, for example, Iceland Air, um, well, Air, rest in peace. Um, they would do so. They do flights from, uh, let's say, DC, New York. They have a stopover in Iceland, and then uh, from Iceland you go to your next destination. That is the hub and spoke uh, model, and it is cheaper than flying uh, directly. Now, because of this, um, people who don't travel as often and wouldn't mind spending a little more time waiting as if you had a connection, I mean, this could make your journey like three, four hours longer, I don't know, depending on your connection, but if you don't travel and if you're not doing it for business and it's just leisure, that, that, that amount of time doesn't concern me all as much. The Concorde had a hundred passenger seats and the interior of the Concorde was nothing special. It looked a bit like an economy class like you would see today. Um, the service was nice, the food service was good, good <laughs> meal services, but the real advantage was the time that you save. Um, the aircraft needed to be 50% full in order to make a profit on its flight, so you need to have 50 um, paying passengers. Now, a big issue is that um, this wouldn't happen a lot of the time. A lot of the time, they would fill up their aircraft by upgrading people who bought first first class tickets, upgrade them to the Concorde. So a lot of the tickets were upgrade or reward seats rather than actual people buying them. The price didn't really seem so worth it. Also, um, the thoughts of business class becoming more, like, becoming better. Um, there was better business class. So back in the late 70s, it wasn't the same as it is now, but by um, the late 90s, uh, you could have a really nice, comfortable bed. You can maybe sleep on your journey there. A first class ticket, you'll be there for longer, but it is more comfortable. So this was a big decision in the process of whether or not they could, that someone would take the flight. Now, um, another problem that the Concorde had was its, uh, its, its limited, its limited uh, <laughs> limitation of routes that. There is so there are 
sonic supersonic boom boom boom. <laughs> Let's talk about the sonic boom. So when a object that flies in the air exceeds the speed of sound, which as I said is 767 miles per hour, it creates a really loud noise called the sonic. We call that the sonic boom. It's like a super loud noise. It is such a loud noise that it break glass. It could actually cause damage. So the Concord flying faster than the speed of sound, its sonic boom created a problem and restrictions as to where it could fly. So it couldn't fly on mainland, main, like it had a really hard time being able to fly mainland. It could only really fly across um, oceans, if you think about it. <laughs> really, transatlantic was the only um, options for the Concorde. And when you look at the options that that aircraft can take, uh, that um, routes that aircraft can do, it could be very damaging to the profit margins that an airline can make. So these are just some examples why, in the end, the Concorde did not fly very well. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, if you want more information about the Concorde, I um, linked some stuff down below, um, including the routes that I used to take and how long it took. Um, I think that's really interesting. Um, and again, like they weren't, there were only uh, 14, oops, there were only 14 um, planes, Concorde planes, that were actually flying. Um, airlines, uh, mainly British Airways and Air France. I believe Singapore Airlines had one, but it was a closure of British Airways, I'm not sure. Um, and it, it, it was, you know, it was revolutionary in the sense that we were able to fly that fast, able to go commercially. <laughs> you you would you could land before you left, <laughs> but it it didn't work out. Um, now I I just I I saw a little bit of this when I was researching this, um, some of the stuff to say, and um, I saw that there are private that do have supersonic flight abilities. Um, but that's so you could still do it if you go privately. That's a whole other I'm pretty sure going on that is really expensive and stuff. So yeah, in conclusion, the Concord just doesn't fit the demand that um, it needed to to fly. It just it didn't fill the demand. It had to be expensive and um, it just it wasn't that much of a need. Time is a privilege more. So saving time is more of a thing that people that people might think about um, when they have more money or when they're doing more often. But price is what's becoming more and more important. Thank you for listening to this short video. I hope you enjoy.